What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So it's that time of the week. It's time for the weekly rotation and back home, super hot. Beach vibes, all the good stuff of being here, but mega, mega hot. So I've been wearing some really fresh stuff for the most part this week. Some may surprise you, uh, but it's been smelling great. It was actually a beach day today. Just got back from, we ate beachside at Sharky's after we went to the beach. It's been a great day, actually. You know, at the recording, this is Saturday, so Saturday's fragrance I'm actually currently wearing. We'll get to that in just a moment, but some very fresh, beautiful smelling fragrances for week number 193 in the weekly rotation, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about them. So stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday is kind of the forgotten flanker that's actually my favorite. This is my big 200 ml bottle of Dior Sauvage Parfum. Dior Sauvage Parfum is kind of the dark horse stepchild in many ways of this scent profile and DNA. I'm a huge fan of this one, I always have been from the start. It's resinous, smoky, sweet, a little ambery and woody. Uh, still very bright and aromatic at the same time. Still has a little bit of the shower gel and broxen feel. Even though I've never seen a note breakdown that says there's embroxin in here, it smells like Sauvage is in here. I've never had trouble tying this one to the DNA. Whereas Elixir, you're kind of reaching to tie it into the Sauvage DNA. Though a lot of people's favorite is the Elixir, and I totally get that. For me, this and Elixir are the best too. But this is my favorite. This is my wife's favorite. It has a mature evening, cooler weather vibe to it, but it still works totally fine. I've worn this on hikes in the mountains in Colorado in spring and summertime. Uh, I mean, hell, it's the middle of summer right now, and I just wore it out here in the humidity in, in the Florida panhandle. It works year-round. You can wear this as a signature scent. Guys, don't sleep on this one. Performance is great for me. Uh, yeah, it's not filling a room, but the sillage lingers, and it lasts a really long time on the skin. This is some good stuff that really gets overshadowed by the popularity of its little brothers and its big brother. So during the day, it was a pleasure to wear Sauvage Parfum. And then I got the shower. So I had sprayed the limited edition Parfum on my wrist, which the wife was really enjoying. She kept telling me how good I was smelling. Uh, she kept wanting to sniff it. So for some reason or another, I was in the mood to wear the Eau de Toilette out the shower, which is way too much fragrance to lounge around for three or four hours before bed. But... Club de Nuit Intense Man, the Eau de Toilette from Armoff. So one of the most hyped, cheap fragrances of all time. Some people can't stand this. This is cheap, synthetic garbage, trash fragrance. I've heard all of that. And then I've heard Compliment Magnet, my most complimented fragrance. And I have tons of niche and all the, I've heard the full spectrum of people's opinions on this fragrance. I still think it is smoky magic. I love that sharp lemon at the top. Admittedly, it is the opening is not near as good to me in this one as all of the rest of the versions. I don't have the Eau de Parfum, but from what I understand, the limited edition Parfum and the Eau de Parfum are basically the same fragrance. And I love the limited edition Parfum. The Pure Perfume, a little bit more earthy, candied lemon mixed with that. It's just You can't go wrong with any of them, but obviously the best way to start I guess would be this one because you can get it around $30 3.6 ounce bottle great performer for me always has been 10 hour fragrance easily on skin everybody's skin's different but smoky magic I mean I, it's way too much fragrance for hanging out out the shower before a few hours before bed but out the shower that's what I went with Club Denui Intense Man the Eau de Toilette Moving into Monday, this was my second full wearing of this fragrance, and I appreciate this one more and more with every spray. Um, I wasn't its biggest fan with my initial impression, but I did not like it. I thought it was good. I'm starting to think it's great. We're talking about a Zaro Chrome Parfum, the newest flanker in the Zaro Chrome line. The way I look at this one, because it's a very resinous green note, like fur balsam resin, I believe is the note, and that's what dominates this fragrance. You do get a little bit of the metallic citrus but it doesn't have all that shower gel smell of the original. So uh, the way I could look at it, let's say you're a guy from my generation. Let's say you're in the, your late 30s to early 40s. If you grew up in the 90s to early 2000s with Chrome, and maybe you have the nostalgic feels for it. You've all, you'll always enjoy that because it was, reminds you of a certain time period in your life. But it's not really your thing anymore. And you kind of want to revisit a more age-appropriate or a more matured smelling take on it. And then you might want to try Chrome Parfum. This is easily the most mature smelling people are going to think i'm saying old man i'm not saying old man um but most mature and refined take i've smelled of chrome 
I think it's worked really well. Uh, performance is very long lasting. It's not going to fill a room, but it does linger and see as you will smell yourself throughout the day. Um, don't doesn't strike me as some massive compliment getter though. My wife does enjoy it. Um, I haven't gotten any compliments outside of her. Then again, it's only been two wearings. But this is actually really good. I do think the Eau de Parfum is better. I still think the Extreme and Aqua are better. But this is up there. I would put this top five Chrome release. And like I said, if you grew up with Chrome, you owe it to yourself to try this if you're kind of wanting to revisit the DNA, but not necessarily exactly what the DNA originally was. That sharp, playful, citric, metallic, just straight up shower gel smelling fragrance, uh, which is still beautiful to this day in my opinion. But this reworks it, reforms it, and refines it. It's good stuff. During the day, Azaro Chrome Parfum. Then we're at the shower. It was time for a shave. So last week, I went with Sphinx Beard Caribbean Island. So the shave soap, and then this is the Splash, which is Creed's Virgin Island Water. So instead of St. Bart's for women, this week I went with Tommy Bahama St. Bart's for men. So I basically mixed a pina colada with a margarita. And as somebody on my Instagram post said, wow, this is the closest I've seen you to layering. Yeah, sim yeah, that's about as far as it'll go. But typically, I'm going to have the fragrance that matches the shave set. I'll wear the fragrance. But I didn't want to just spray Virgin Island Water's expensive ass. Just to lounge around before bed for like three hours. Virgin Island Water, I'd rather wear out and about functionally during the day on a hot day if I want to wear that. I want to get more use, more function, more functionality out of those expensive sprays. Whereas with this, $20 fragrance does the same job, blends well. Even though they're not the same type of boozy drink, they still fit. They fit, because this has always been a great alternative while not being the same smell to Virgin Island water. So that's the route I went. I was smelling really damn good, in my opinion. Out the shower, had a good shave with Sphinx Beard Caribbean Island and sprayed Tommy Bahama St. Bart's. Now moving into Tuesday, we were out and about. We had a lot going on and uh, really hot, so I wanted something really fresh. And I got to tell you, the more I wear this one, the more it's becoming my favorite version of this scent profile. It's from Tom Ford. This is Costa Azura Aqua. So there was a stretch when I was really vibing with the Parfum. And I love the Eau de Parfum. Don't get me wrong, I love the other versions that I have. But this one, I mean, I get about four hours out of it if I'm lucky. Three to four hours of performance and longevity. About a solid hour of projection. Then a pretty calm sillage, but it has that Riviera feel. That coastline, maritime, marine feel with a lot of greens. Slightly spiced green woody facet while still being marine and aquatic, a little salty. I love this fragrance. This is so good. But it won't get love. And hell, it might even be, I think it's discontinued. I'm glad I got this 100 ml. I think it's discontinued. I actually did refresh because, I mean, we were, I was wearing it for a few hours after I got back from the gym and we, then we were about to go run and do things. So I gave myself another like, four sprays, five sprays, something like that. To refresh because performance is not a virtue with this thing it's not something special i absolutely adore the way this fragrance smells and just like with all the other fresh eau de toilette flankers the aqua flankers and the other eau de toilettes from tom ford they don't get any love because they're so fresh they wear like that they wear as such and they don't really last all that long so they get kind of pushed to the side and a lot of them aren't even on the market anymore but i'm so glad i grabbed a bunch of them because this is my clear-cut favorite of them. It's also the one I made sure to get a 100 milliliter bottle of. If you get the opportunity to sample this one and you can temper your expectations with performance, it's worth checking out. Does it smell pretty much just like a fresher version of the Eau de Parfum? Yeah, it really does. It's a little bit greener. It is. It's a little bit more green and fresh and zesty, if you will. But that's what I love about it on a hot-ass summer's day. Oh, this is one of the better ones I've grabbed in a long time. During the day, Tom Ford close to Azura Aqua. When I got the shower, we really stuck with bright and fresh with weak performance. Paris Corners Emir Trillium. I love to spray this one out the shower. It has the weakest, possibly the weakest atomizer I've ever seen. Look at that. Like you got a double, double spray just to get a somewhat decent whole spray is how you can look at it. So if I do eight or 10 sprays of this, it's like four or five normal sprays. I love this though, because it's so airy and metallic. I wear this more than all three versions of Elysium. I wear this more than Imperium. 
I wear this more than Zion. I wear this more than Blue Sapphire. This is the one I reach for. When I'm in the mood for Elysium, I go after this one. Now, if I was going out into the world to do things more than just because like out the shower, this is my go to to the gym. This is my go to when I want Elysium because it's weak and fresh. Love it. Love it. So fresh and metallic. The freshest and most metallic of the group. I know I keep saying that, but that's what makes me love it. Now, if I'm going out in the world, it's going to be Imperium. It's going to be one of the three original versions of Elysium, which lately I've been gravitating to the newest one, Oh Intense. It's phenomenal. Don't knock it till you try it. But if you haven't tried this one, and you're okay with it not being strong, and you want a like just the most airy version you could imagine of Elysium Parfum Cologne, this is it. You should really try this. Uh, it's cheap. You're probably going to have to blind buy it. Just know that you might only get a few hours. You're probably only going to get a few hours. But it is such a wonderful experience for that short amount of time. You just refresh. Great stuff. Out the shower, Paris Corner, Emir, Trillium. Moving into Wednesday. This is one that I would urge you to try. Now, it's not easy or really cheap to try. It's a 10 milliliter travel size. It's going to run you about 30 bucks. Really not that bad uh, for niche. It's really not that bad. 129 bucks for a 50 ml, but I got to tell you, something I never would have thought and fathom, fathomed to create, and I'm glad it exists. It is watermelon moonshine, is what it's based around. So this is copper steel fragrance. This is triple X watermelon shine. I just did a live stream featuring this one. I just did a full wearing experience, uh, and it lasts really, really long. It's 50% oil concentration. It's the same perfumer that did a lot of the early fragrances for City Rhythm. Great quality. Bright, fresh, and airy while still being such a high oil concentration. It lasts a really, really long time. After about an hour and a half, it calms down quite a bit, but it's got a really good sillage. We still get nice light hits of it. It's not super strong in its sillage. I would call it slightly better than moderate to mild but not quite moderate where it's just constantly I'm getting whiffs of it it's here and there but the whiffs I do get are very distinguishable with enough potency to kind of make me smile because it is this is a beautiful fragrance it really is believable watermelon juice that falls in between actual watermelon juice and a candy like a watermelon jolly rancher it falls somewhere in between so it doesn't smell super synthetic but it also doesn't just smell juicy super juicy like there's a sweet a candied sweet tone to it as well beautiful stuff not over not overtly boozy though there is this distinguishable boozy note i mean moonshine kentucky moonshine is in here uh this is a beautiful fragrance like i said you should really try this guys unique i have nothing else that smells like this surprising great great in the heat for even being a 50 percent oil concentration do yourself a favor and get your nose on this because i am sure digging it during the day copper still fragrance watermelon shine now i got the shower i haven't reached for this one in a while big 200 ml bottle big massive thing of boss bottled unlimited i might even put this in the thumbnail i don't know I haven't made the thumbnail yet but pineapple a little metallic and aquatic some violet leaves i think it's called frozen violet leaves on the box actually in a nice woody nuance nothing complex fresh a little sporty great minty tone still being fruity and watery it's really nice it's been around for many years it's kind of overshadowed this big massive 200 milliliter bottle i've got plenty i'll never run out of this i have another 200 ml bottle of boss number six the original boss bottle um, but this is this is so good if you're in a warm climate and you want minty fresh fruity here you go. Underappreciated fragrance right here. It's a little more sporty than you may think. The bottle is gorgeous with this white ceramic look with that green print. And then the Atom, I know this is irrelevant, but it's all about the little details, right? Then the same green is in the dot for the Atomizer where the juice comes out. Just, again, irrelevant. But as far as Boss bottled bottles, might be the prettiest one. Um, again, irrelevant, but... It, looks good in hand looks good in the collection but it smells fantastic average at best performer four to five hours uh slightly below average but if you don't mind refreshing you can get a 200 ml for pretty cheap <laughs> just saying but uh it was really good to revisit this one because it's been a little while but out the shower minty fresh pineapple a little woodsy 
Boss Bottled Unlimited. Moving into Thursday, it was nice to reach for this one. I forgot who it was. Shame on me for not remembering your profile name. It was in a live stream. He mentioned wearing it, and I was like, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. I haven't wore it yet since I moved to the beach. It's time to wear it. It's one of the best fragrances ever created for the summertime. It's so fresh and invigorating. I wore it during the day. I wore it out the shower. It's Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre. Citron. Lemon grapefruit smell. Earthy vetiver woody smell. Just it's that simple. A little metallic, but it, it just it works. It's so good. It's so good. I looked yesterday at the recording of this. Fragrance Buy has 100 ml testers for 76 bucks. Hermes, they have their caps. Um, at least H24. I have H24 EDP a tester and it came with its cap. So I would assume this does too. I'll put the I have links to everything below, but 100 ml tester. $76 from Fragrance Buy right now at the recording of this. Uh, even in the $90 range, it's still worth it. It's not going to win performance awards. I do get slightly above average longevity, six, seven hour range. Uh, and it's so bright and fresh on a hot day. God, this is so invigorating. This will lift you and boost your mood, elevate everything. It's just so refreshing and crisp while still being a little elegant and kind of does the same job as a Diorum Cologne, for example, because that has that's become folklore at this point. And I think this is going to go down in same similar vein, vein where that got still gets praised to this day as one of the most refreshing citrus-based fragrances money can buy for men in the designer world. It's just a staple for the summer. And I think Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre is going to be the exact same thing, if it's not already, because it's a hype beast, and it deserves all of the praise. You should try this. If you haven't yet, this is a must-try citrus fragrance during the day and out the shower. Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre. Moving into Friday is a brand new release from Giorgio Armani. It is this year's release in the Aqua de Jo line. It is Aqua de Jo Parfum. Now, there's a mixed bag of reviews from people, from consumers, from viewers, from reviewers and content creators, from everyone. Some love that this exists. Some are complaining that I can't believe this replaced Profumo. Profumo is so much better. Here's, here's my take. Profumo is better. But Profumo is better for the cooler weather, for dressier situations, when you want that added elegance but still that beautiful mass appeal that you know is going to pull some compliments and get some attention and is a great wearing experience for you. Now, if you live in a warmer climate, you want this one more than Profumo. At least I'd do, I would think so anyways, because it is inherently fresher. The rosemary here stands out more. It's a little bit greener and fresh spicy, a little bit more aquatic. The incense is toned down, not greatly, but slightly. Kind of like, it almost smells like a reformulation of Profumo, like they made it fresher. It didn't suffer greatly in a performance stripping, like it's still eight to 10 hours on my skin, I've done a review on this, comparing this to the Eau de Parfum, to the Eau de Toilette. I've, I've featured this a bunch at this point. It still performs great. Two hours of great projection. It's. I'm not mad at it. If they're phasing out Profumo to make this more uniform, even though Profumo means Parfum, it was already the Parfum, and, but they're just making it more uniform because I'm going to call it here now, watch, next year it's going to be Aqua de Jo Elixir. They're going to jump on that train because we have EDT, EDP, and Parfum. They made the uniformity across the line. But I'm here for it. I'm not mad at it. I think it was a great release for this year. So now I can take my bottle of Profumo and reserve it for when I want this scent profile in cooler weather. I reach for that. If I want this scent profile in a dressier situation, I'll use that. Whereas casually and in the hotter weather, I'm reaching for this because it works that much better than Profumo. They're tools, guys. Use them appropriately. Right tool for the right job. During the day, Aqua de Jo Parfum. And then when I got up the shower, this caught my eye. I haven't worn it in a while. It's it's timeless type of style. It's done to death. Uh, it doesn't smell like what it's flankered from, thank God, because that fragrance is terrible. This is Grey Flannel. Oh, de Grey Flannel, specifically. The Blue Juice. The original Grey Flannel, terrible. Awful, my God. Ugh, I don't know how people like that. I get it. Some of you watching this and be like, oh, no, not gray flannel, TLTG, you crazy. Hey, glad you like it. I sure don't. But this, this is really good. So much so that I'm going to wear it when I get out the shower. So spicy aromatic barbershop, a little green, woody, musky, 
timeless style aromatic fougere, just really fresh, not a strong performer. This pops up at Ross Dress for Less pretty often for like 15, 12 to 15 dollars. It's not special, it's not unique. But if you want a cheapie that you can enjoy, I strictly wear this out the shower. Um, it was hiding in the back of my collection when I was in Colorado. Now everything's out in plain sight to where I can see it easier. So it caught my eye and I was like, you know what? I'm wearing this out the shower. So that's exactly what the hell I did. One of the better cheapies that has an older, old school masculine vibe to it, but still very fresh. That doesn't get any love. Out the shower, eau de gray flannel. Finally on Saturday, I'm wearing it right now. It's right there. It's right there. I got four sprays around the neck. It is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau, Le Parfum. My favorite Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance. Yes, more than Le Mal, Le Parfum. That's my favorite Le Mal. It's between the Le Parfum and the Elixir. Obviously, I go back and forth. Every day it might be a different one, but it's those two as far as Le Mal. But overall, Le Beau, Le Parfum from Jean-Paul Gaultier is my favorite, uh, with Le Beau EDT being a close second. Yeah, the LeBeau line. I can't wait to see where they're going to go with this line. Stick to the DNA, Jean-Paul Gaultier. The higher-ups, whoever handles the marketing and the decision-making. Stick to this DNA and flank her accordingly. I'm here for it. I'll buy all of them. All of them at retail. I'm telling you, you'll get my money. Because this is great. Tropical pineapple coconut. Fresh, vibrant, green, soapy floral. Cypress and iris. Powdery tonka bean. It's sweet, it lasts, but it's still fresh and tropical. I literally wore this on the beach today, on top of my sunscreen. Is it kind of stupid to wear a fragrance to go get in the salt water? Yeah, it is, I understand, but I love fragrance. I wear a fragrance for everything, guys. We've been over this before. I wear a fragrance for everything. So after we dried off, after laying out and everything, we went to Sharky's, black and shrimp. She had the fried shrimp. We split both because they're both phenomenal. Um, sitting beachside and I reapplied because it's phenomenal. I had it with me and I wanted to enjoy it. it. I know it's hard to get guys. I know it's hell for it to stay in stock anywhere and the second it goes in stock it sells out. It's one of the best releases of 2022 overall. Not just designer releases. Like I said my thoughts, my opinion the best Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance to come out. It's my favorite of all the ones I've tried. And it performs great. The wife's a huge fan. It's super versatile. It's sweet enough and strong enough to work in the cold when you want a nice, summery, tropical, fresh vibe. It's a compliment magnet. And it's not so sweet and dense that it can't work in, you know, I think it was like 75% humidity today. And just to give you an idea, when I got in my car, the dash said 104. I think the feels like temperature was at like 109, 110, something like that. At 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I was rocking it. I was enjoying it. During the day, La Bola Parfum, it's great stuff, guys. I hope more of you can try it sooner than later. I had, a, I had a decant before I ever got the bottle. I had a 10 ml decant. I went through about half of it before I finally it came in stock when I could get a bottle. But tonight when I get out the shower, but not long from now, I'm going to go shower here in just a little bit. I'm full of salt, dried up salt water and sunscreen and stuff like that. But after I get out the shower, I'm going with this again because it was just a joy to wear. Sometimes that timeless scent profile is all you need because timeless scent profiles are just that. They're timeless, they always work. They're good for everything. True signature scent type of stuff. This was a great scent profile in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010s, and here in the 2020s, and I guarantee you it's still gonna be good in the 2030s. It's a spicy aromatic fougere based around aromatics musks stuff like that just works and it's just crazy cheap so tonight or in a little bit anyways out the shower eau de gray flannel well that was this week's rotation and until next time do me a quick favor go ahead and like comment subscribe because i do appreciate all the feedback and i love hearing from you guys what you guys wear this week let me know down in the comments i'm very curious as you can see great mood had a great day great day today and uh, i hope you guys had an awesome weekend yourselves because uh Life's good. Life's good. Life's short. You might as well enjoy it. And in that process, you might as well smell good doing it. Because I tell you, from, for me over here, I'm smelling good with everything I do every day of my life. And I hope the same for you. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I wore this past week and give them a spray now, it's a really good chance you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.